how important do you think MLS has been to the development of players and then how that feeds into the national team? Because we're going to be talking MLS a lot today, and I just wanted to have a little bit of some context about how important the league has been to – or the, the infrastructure that's being built. Now, obviously, there's been mistakes made, and there's going to be mistakes made moving forward. I think that's part of, of the league growing and trying to compete in a lot of different ways with – with foreign leagues, but also the, the other sports leagues in this country. Yeah. So there has to be some risk that are taken to, to try to catch up in a lot of different ways, both on and off the field. Yeah. But, but I guess I'm trying to extrapolate, and I, want to, I can't wait to hear from Charlie as well no, on no, this. I, yeah. If there was no domestic league, though, but I'll start with you, Heath. If there's no domestic league, well, then I guess our players would just go over to Europe like they used to with like Eric Winalda days and, and all that. And we could argue we'd probably still potentially have a pretty robust national team, but – maybe we wouldn't i mean maybe we wouldn't no. be as strong what, what do you say yeah no i i think for for any country to have a dominant national team you have to have a strong and and uh fundamental domestic league i think we're getting to that point now mls because of its quirks and the way that it was built in single entity has gone through a lot of these phases of creating these different mechanisms for uh player salaries right uh allocation money things like that that I think has created the ebb and flow of the development of the American player. But without Major League Soccer, we are not a strong national team at all. Now, again, you go back to Bob's era. He wanted more players in Europe. Most of those players, though, were still starting their careers in Major League Soccer. Mm -hmm. Now you look at the players and you still have a large contingency in Europe. They're going earlier. Or maybe you have a Gio Reyna who's in NY NYCFC. Now, okay, you could say that MLS in itself, but he's still in their system before he leaves. So I think... 95% of success stories that we're going to see in the national team, both now and into the future, are going to have some sort of direct link to Major League Soccer. Might not be first-team football, but it's going to be within their academies or some sort of infrastructure. And that sort of development of the league is, I think, the most important factor to our national team ever being a dominant force is the infrastructure that the league is providing beyond, again, the first-team player. Uh, the first-team player, I think, is still important in the national team, but the league in itself... I think is the most important factor towards our national team being successful both now and into the future. That's my take. Okay. No, no, no. I, and, and Charlie, I, I'm going to give you a little bit of a different angle on this. Um, and I want you to answer the same thing I said from the start, but I want to make sure that there's some context here. By no means, I think are we going to raise our hand and say that MLS is perfect. They, they have made some mistakes. We were all part of the union, the players union and the collective bargaining agreement. And we wish in some ways they, they, they would take off the handcuffs and actually let these owners spend in the, and, and just let it go, right? And let it grow in a way now where I think the, the stability is there. And that's why I think the single entity structure was in place to kind of counter the historical failures of developing a professional league here in the States for, for a number of years, NASL being the most obvious one that ended up folding in 83. And it took us, what, 15, 14, 15 years to get it going again. So I understand why those mechanisms were put in place, but at some point, you'd like to think that there was a plan to evolve from that. And then now I feel like we're there. So, so you know, <clears throat> but, but yeah, I guess you can kind of pick and I just try to l let everybody know that, 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 that because we everybody thinks we're MLS homers. And, and to a certain extent, extent you know, I, I, I am because that's my whole career was played in it. But, but I also see it for what it is and that it has – has room to grow and, and to continue to bet, get better and to continue to strive. And I think that's all we want is that they're, they're, they're looking towards that. The people that are making decisions are trying to make, work towards that. But go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, it, you talk about a huge contribution to the development of the sport in this, this country. Initially, it was started off the heels of the 1994 World Cup because everyone saw how incredible the sport was. And for the, for the I guess, vast majority of Americans, they didn't know about soccer. They didn't know what the, the power of the sport and how it brings people together and, and how easy it is to play. And, and I think when you talk about Major League Soccer in the early stages, it's entertainment. You're trying to get people to buy into the sport because you, you need to fund. You need to fund it. You need to fund bringing uh, att attractive players to the league. So you, you pull out all these different types of quirks, the, the five-second dribble up. I mean, that, that was something I, I loved as a kid. But um, it, it allowed me to grow. It gives you visibility and, and something that you wouldn't have had had you not had this league here. And then a lot of players, they got the opportunity to, to, to one, go to games, but then train with teams, be a part of, of the early MLS sides, and then make the move. Without MLS, 
our, our national team is not where it is today. That is a fact. And you look at it currently, a lot of these players, they started with the academies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe they didn't play for an MLSI, but you, you can't tell me from maybe ages of 10 to 14 or 8 to 14, whatever it is, that they weren't involved with the MLS academies or, you know, being involved with these MLS sides, whether it's clinics, uh, tournaments, camps, whatever it is, it has played a huge role in, in our country. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you, Jimmy. I've had the benefit of, of developing here, play, going to college, but then going to Europe and playing and pushing myself, but ultimately coming back to MLS. So I've, I've seen, you know, I've seen it on both both sides of the coin. It's it's an incredible league and it's only getting better. Of course, there's going to be some ups and downs. And a lot of people have hate because you you ha you you hold the English Premier League and La Liga and the Bundesliga to a certain standard. And and now you're starting to see more players from America go to those leagues because of what they're able to do here. No, no, well, no. I appreciate both of you guys. Jimmy, real, go ahead. Go ahead. Heath. Real, real, real quick. I. This is my 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 thing about the arguments that we we all face anytime that we protect or stand up for a, an ML and it's more usually the MLS player than it is the, the the league but we are considered we are called or I am at least called uh, a shill for a propaganda no 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 yeah, propaganda a propaganda <laughs> and my question to anybody is what how did how did our national team get how is the talent pool better now than it was before and if you don't think that it's because of major league soccer then it is just a generational group of talent. And we're going to go back to being not very good again or average. Or I mean, I don't mean not very good, but I mean not competing to be one of the best in the world. But those same people are the ones talking about 2026 and 2030 and like we're going to win a World Cup soon. How, how are those players going to get better? Is it just because we've always had the most participation uh, in soccer at the youth level. We've always had the potential. We've always had the athletes. We've always had the raw material goods. But it's because of Major League Soccer and the academies and the development, of course, the national team and other things that, and other factors and other players uh, of diverse backgrounds. But by and large, the success of that is going to be rooted in player development coming through Major League Soccer. USL can do the same. I think lower division has an important role in all those things. But the stability of Major League Soccer and the foundation of that is going to be what we go back to and look at as the single defining success as to why we have a higher quality of players playing at the biggest clubs in Europe and competing at the national team level for potentially trophies in the future. And we got FC Dallas as a great example. They have a lot of players that have gone over to Europe from FC Dallas. We were championing the, a youth academy from Philadelphia Union for the U-20s because four of their players starred as we qualified for the Olympics in the U-20 World Cup recently. So, yes, I mean, those those are incredibly important. I'm just naming two. There's plenty of other ac academies that are contributing players at, at different levels and sending players over to Europe. And I think that's a good evolution that we're falling into. Now, I'm here in Minneapolis right now. I'm not at one of Chuck's uh, many estates. Uh, he let me borrow a room. But I'm here in Minneapolis for the USA Cup, which is the biggest uh, youth tournament in North America. And uh, I'm the MC here. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're here, everybody, come say hi. But what I found interesting is I went and watched uh, a couple teams yesterday play, and, and there was a U10 team from Chicago, and there's this one kid who's an absolute baller, just running it, his aggressiveness, his ideas, his off-the-ball running, fantastic. And I, and I wonder, how do we keep tabs on that kid? Like, how do we, how do we keep an eye on what he's doing? And, and, and are, are we scouting at that level? Maybe, maybe not. But, but what was also interesting for me is I talked to some of the parents, talked to the coach, and one of their things, and this is kind of ties, ties into the MLS conversation we're having. They're like, why are the Chicago fires so bad? <laughs> and that wouldn't have happened before, though. I mean, the fact that they're paying attention, the fact that they have, and this is really important for, to, for development as well, is that you go into a game live, seeing what these players are doing off the ball, seeing that, hey, I want to play in that league. I want to represent that team. And I think I can do what those guys are doing or maybe do it even better is incredibly important for, for the visualization part of, of the dream, right? You have a dream and now you can see it. It's tangible. It's in front of you. You can go to the games. And then from there, you can start to take bigger steps. And I think that was really vital to, to our development as well as we got to watch games when we were younger. Now, I didn't have MLS to lean on. I'm a little bit older, as you guys know, but I went to UCLA games and and Joe Max Moore was playing, Kobe Jones, Brad Friedel. So I was definitely uh, part of or watching or witnessing uh, some great talent that obviously went on to represent the U.S. at the highest levels. <laughs>